Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a dog nose in pastels. Now the key elements that I follow here are going to be applied to any nose really that I draw regardless of the animal. I want to be making sure that I've got the shape and the size of that nose accurate. So you can see here at the first very initial layer all I'm doing is blocking in the shapes. So I do want to be making sure that the nostrils are in the right place and that they're the right size. Once I've done that, I'm then going to map in the lower shape of that nose. Now, once I've got this structure in, I therefore know where my boundaries are. It's very obvious if the nose is not quite right, even if it's just that one nostril is a little bit smaller or larger than it should be. It's something that can be very distracting. Now, because the nose is in the centre of the face, this is going to be very noticeable if it's not right, even if someone doesn't have the original reference photo. So here you can see I'm really taking my time to make sure that everything is mapped in accurately. Now once I'm happy with that, you can see here that I'm now just starting to block in the rest of the nose and this is where I'm just hinting at my lights and my darks. Now also notice that I'm not putting one colour down over the entire nose, I'm really focusing on where the main lights and darks are going to be. Now here you can see that I've got a couple of pencils that are in view and this is because I'm explaining in the real time version available on my Patreon channel why I'm selecting specific colours. Now this is a question that I'm asked more frequently on social media so I really do focus this aspect in all of my real time tutorials on Patreon. Now the exact colour to select is not as important as worrying about the value of that colour. So you want to be making sure that you're picking a colour that's light enough or dark enough based on what it is that you're drawing. Now as you can see here I'm using a mixture of warm and cool colours and really that's the one main thing that I'm focusing on in terms of a specific colour. So once I'm focusing on the value, how light or how dark it should be, it's whether or not it is a warm or a cool colour. Now obviously there is a little bit more to it than that because we have many pencils to choose from so if that aspect of any colour based mediums is of interest then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now this stage of the nose so far is a very good example of what I speak about in all other tutorials on YouTube when I'm drawing fur. I want to be making sure that I've got the base layer stage here nice and soft and well blended. You can see there are no harsh edges. Now by focusing on that softness and getting my values right, so the lights and the darks, I'm already building up a three dimensional look of this nose at this base layer stage and yet there's not any detail whatsoever. Now you can see here that I'm incorporating some blues and at times there's going to be potentially some purples and this here is where I'm isolating now where I can see those warm and cool colours. So this is an example that there was the Derwent Dioxazine purple and I'm just using this to add a little bit of a tinted purple over the top of the blue. Now in many cases you want to incorporate blues and purples into noses because they're very reflective. Where the noses have that wet and um, sort of bit more of that shinier appearance they are going to be very reflective of the sky. So in most cases you are going to have some blues and purples that need to be brought in. Now one thing I want to mention about any colours to avoid when drawing noses is it's going to be very subjective depending on your portrait. But for example, this portrait of Roxy the Rottweiler, you can see a finished photograph of my drawing in the corner and I've taken out the grass in the background. So it is just her head and shoulder that I've used on the dark grey pastel mat. I have of course added a light glow effect background and I get lots of questions about that type of background that I use for my pet portraits. So if you'd like to see how I create that, then again, I've got a tutorial showing that process on my Patreon. But for this photo, I knew I didn't want to incorporate any of the grass into this. So I had to make sure that if there was any green reflections in the nose, I would have to take those out because I wasn't having any greenery in the portrait. If, however, I was drawing something where the grass was included, let's say the dog was laying down and you could see some blades of grass in front of the chest and so on, then you would want to add those greens to the nose because that's going to help to bring the subject and the grass, the foreground, the background together. But with something like this, I personally feel for my art that I like to take that green tint out. Now, of course, there's no right or wrong answer. I do just feel that for the green, it doesn't quite make sense if there's no additional green in that portrait. Whereas because we've got the blue in the reflections of the eye, it's all making sense to incorporate that into the blues of the nose because they are going to be just as reflective as some areas of the eyes as well. Now at this stage here, certainly not finished, there's no real detail that I'm adding as such, but I am starting to define 
a little bit more of the texture of the nose. So you can see now that I'm starting to reinforce my values. So I'm gonna to start to add in some lighter highlights. They're still not my brightest highlights though. I don't wanna be jumping into the brightest white pencil that I have, for example. I wanna be building up lots of layers in between. Now by doing this and building up subtle layers, we're gonna not only get more of a three-dimensional look, but the depth of this nose, the shape, the rounded look on the nostrils are all gonna be so much more lifelike by the more layers that we add. Now what's important here is not to overwork an area. So you don't wanna be putting loads of pastel down in one section because you're gonna fill the tooth of the paper. So you can see here that I'm just working with very subtle light layers. I don't wanna be jamming any of that pastel in the tooth of the paper early on. And it's also why I like to work from dark to light when I do work with my pastels most of the time. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that. If I have specific lighter fur textures, I'm gonna be putting some lighter and mid-tone values down first. But for noses, I do always find working from dark to light is a really good way of building up additional depth. So without doubt, the two main important things when drawing noses are layers and contrast. You wanna make sure that you've got your darks dark enough and your highlights bright enough. So here is a photo of the finished drawing. And if you are interested in drawing along to the full length real time tutorial from start to finish, then that is available on my Patreon now. I'll pop all of that information in the description below. If you've got any art related questions, then feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if this video was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be very, very grateful. And I do upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube very soon.